In the history of mankind, has there ever been a more obvious truth than the statement, we are all going to die? A lifetime. How long is it supposed to last? Suffering is something that is passed on from one generation to the next, like flexibility, grace, or colorblindness. How's the writing going? Terrible. Do you think I've peaked? That I'm already on the downside of a largely forgettable career? I see you haven't lost your flair for melodrama. Oh, for you, all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Your name, your sister. She tried to kill herself. Good morning, everyone. What an incredibly moving movie this was. Uh, Michael, I'd like to start with, uh, you know, the fact that the issues are really complex and really uh, dense and fraught. And I think the way that you deliver them most effectively is through, like, total simplicity. Was that something you strove to do? Uh well, I, I mean, I had the, obviously I had Miriam's novel and, you know, then trying to figure out a way to take, you know, a 300 page book and sort of condense it into the, into under two hours was the challenge. And sort of after a lot of starts and stops sort of figured out, I don't know, I don't know how I did, but I just figured out a way to, to do that. But there's, I don't know if simplicity, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not because there's a lot there's lots going on with the film with obviously performances with how we come in, in and out of time and stuff like that so I, I don't know if I would say simplicity not that I was trying to be complex either if that makes sense <laughs> right I understand Allison um there's really it occurred to me that there's not a lot of crying in this and I think maybe crying might have been the point at which everybody gave up um would you have any comment on that like they can't be allowed to give up. Right. I think, and I think that's what Mike and I spoke most about um, in the making of it. And also in watching the first cuts was how important it is that we don't let the pressure off too soon. Like there are so many almost breaking points throughout the film, but there's only one that leads to um, this kind of transformation of grief into whatever comes after it. Mm. And that keeping that uh, clear was really essential um, because there are so many ways to feel emotions or to, um, to show them to other people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how we get about the world and how we hold ourselves together for our family and our friends and our kids and everything else. Um, so the moments of falling apart and putting yourself back together keep happening throughout the film until it finally is like, it's not, I can't, I can't put it back together. Um, and I think keeping that clarity was one of the great challenges um, because this shit will make you cry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and you're right. I mean, and the performances, every, all of your your performances and Mare Winningham, oh, incredible. Uh, Sarah, when you make a film like this that is so um, demanding and force, I would imagine forces you to look inside a lot and to people you know, are, do you ever feel traumatized by it? I don't, I don't think I feel traumatized by it. Um, I, I think that I've spent a lot of time as an adult kind of learning how to not take my work home with me. And, and I think so much of what we strive to do as actors is to be really experiencing each, you know, scene moment to moment in a state of being that's very present. And then when you walk away from that state of being, you might, you might, you know, have the emotional hangover of living inside of a place, but then you learn how to kind of deal with, with the, the aftermath in a way that's, that's healthy. Um, because you have to be a functioning person in the rest of your life, right? You yeah. have to go home and you have to be a partner to someone or and be a mother or be, you know, whatever you are in your real life. And so you can't necessarily 
I think you have to do just as much work to just to not take that home with you. Yeah. So uh, uh, when does it, when does it strike you? Is it reading the script or doing it? When is it most um, piquant to you both? Um, I think the beauty of uh, I think the beauty of it goes to what Sarah was just saying um, in terms of being present, where it constantly morphs and shifts. Mm-hmm. You know, you might have ideas you know in reading something and reading the novel first and then the script like you have different senses of what things mean or what things mean to you and then you come at it from trying to bring a single person to life um from your own well and uh and then there's also you know there's this amazing thing that can happen in acting when you're suddenly like oh, geez, I've connected to the cosmos. You know, like some some bolt of inspiration has come through. Um, and it is that that very presence that Sarah was speaking of, of like, I, I never feel more uh, of a conduit for whatever the heck is going on in the world than in these moments. And those kinds of surprises, um, for me, happened a lot in, in the making of this, where you know, you can come in with an idea and then because of Sarah's work or because of the cold or because there's like a wild turkey walking in the background or whatever, you know what it is, that there's some moment that drags you into the beauty of the world. And there's this sort of like this, this, this feeling of existence that you don't get many times. Amazing. I'm so I'm not an actor, so this is all incredibly interesting to me. Um, now, the the dialogue is is really precise and um, and and spare in a way, and the power from that. I th- I think this goes back to my feeling about watching it as it, it's simple. It's it's pared down. It's not uh, f- you know florid. Um, I just love the words. The dialogue. I have not read the book. I don't know if I can. It's <laughs> tough. But uh, did the words feel different to you, Sarah, from other scripts? Say, I th- I think that there, you know, will always be a connection between literature and cinema, and there really has been since the inception of cinema. The literary adaptation has been a very present thing in 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 the medium. Um, and I think that why actors like Allison and I are so drawn to these kinds of movies is because there's a level of intelligence and there's a there's a literary aspect about them. And that shows up, as you're saying, in the dialogue um, where you have two people, you know, speaking in a way to each other that is is very literary and it's very it's intelligent. And I think as an intelligent performer, you're drawn to that kind of material. That's the kind of material that you want to squish around in and you want to you know interrogate and and there are so many layers of meaning in Miriam's writing and in Michael's adaptation and part of the the fun part of preparing for the film was to peel back each layer and to keep kind of exploring them and you know I think that we can both continue to find layers of meaning right up until we were shooting where you know th- certain things would ping you in a in a way that you didn't understand or you would, you know, experience a series of dialogues in a different way. And, and that's, you know, the fun part of realizing something as an actor. That is so cool. I love these descriptions. Thank you so much. And best of luck, Michael and ladies. This is such a beautiful film. Thanks, Thank Anne. Mom showed me your suicide note. Thank you for putting me on it. You're welcome. I was like two thirds down the list. It was like I was an after just didn't want it to go to your head. Of course not. This wasn't a mistake. No. None of this strikes me as a cry for help. At the hospital, she asked me if I'd Thomas Aquinas her. She must have meant, will I forgive her? She planned it well. I beg to differ. After all, she's still alive. Yes. Not like your father. We have heard that Elfrida has expressed a desire to leave the community, to study music. If she goes, she'll get ideas. That's what university's for, isn't it? Will you take me to Switzerland? They have clinics there where dying is legal. But are you thinking at all of the reasons to stay alive? 
Has it occurred to you that I also lost my father to suicide and I'm having a hard time getting over it? Maybe you're here for a reason, which is to be a sister to me. You don't understand a thing. I do understand. Is this almost too much, Mom? Almost. Ours is essentially a tragic age, so we refuse to take it tragically. There is now no smooth road into the future. We've got to live, no matter how many skies have fallen. I don't want to die alone. I don't want you to die.